G'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, Happy New Year for 2025. Should be a fun year. Been pretty busy here with uh, various projects and building bits and pieces and antenna towers and the like. Um, but what I wanted to talk about today was the next project which I'm going to embark on. I've um, got a bit of a list of things here that I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, in no particular order. Uh, an automatic ATU that's still on my wish list. You may recall I purchased this some time ago which is an inexpensive board here with a whole raft of relays um, with their controllers um, and I was looking to, to make that into an automatic tuner do the software and sort of go through the, the, the mental challenge of that um, the idea was not to make it as small as it could possibly be but just driven by this particular board here which was a nice and convenient and I'll talk more about that in a sec so that was on my list um, a loop antenna, still quite keen at some point in time to build one of those just uh, to say I've sort of been there and done that. Um, a fox hunting VHF receiver. Uh, that's also on the list. Uh, I bought a UHF radio a little while ago which worked well. But um, like I say I wouldn't mind building a VHF receiver specifically for fox hunting. Uh, and um, what's the word specialising in I guess in terms of meters and the like. And the other thing which has been on my list for quite some time is to build a, um, a Pelican case style radio, uh, which is what I want to talk about today. So this is not a Pelican case, but it's a what I'd call a Pelican case style um, case. It's actually waterproof, which is surprising. Um, it's in a very inexpensive case, inexpensive more the point, uh, case from AliExpress. Uh, Volume-wise, yeah, reasonably large, but um, I want a sort of a, a, a reasonably small case. So this is what I want to build a, um, a radio into. Debating about what it was going to be, um, my current band of choice is um, 40 meters for the sodas and poters and, and, and chasing those as well as getting out into the field. Uh, I was toying with the idea of making this um, more than one band. For example, either 80-40 or 40-20 or 40 higher. Um, I've decided though that I'll just stick with a single band radio um, because there's a few other things I want to squeeze into here and I just don't want to get the um, the game of having to squeeze a whole lot into here where I was quite happy with 40 meters in the first place. I was um, thinking about, okay we'll come to that. So Pelican case, uh, 40 meters um, using through hole components which I still have a, a lot of. Um, I haven't had the need at this point in time to transition fully to SMD. Um, I will say though that a, a number of the integrated circuits that I um, have employed in the past um, are unobtainium now and through hole and they're all SMD. So I'm sort of buying more and more of those with the, the breakout boards to um, to get the, um, the footprint a lot larger, <coughs> which has been interesting. Internal battery, so I do want to squeeze into this a um, this lithium ion battery here. Uh, had been using this externally, but um, I've now replaced this with a quite a nice USB C PD um, supply. So I think um, this be high time this goes actually into a radio. Um, I actually had one of these mounted in the UHF radio I built, and it works really well. So I think I'll have this um, mounted in here. Um, there'll be the ability to charge that. Um, as well as run the radio uh, externally and I'll standardize on Anderson pole Anderson pole um, uh, panel mount um, because of the rest of the shack and all the portable gears running that so we'll just standardize on that um, also not looking to squeeze every last uh, amp out of that so uh, I'm not going to bother too much um, trying to run everything at the lowest possible uh, current draw so I'll just pick a, a um, for the amplifier stages a, um, a good quiescent current and, and I'll run on that. Uh, in terms of the ATU I had initially wanted to uh, design the automatic ATU to go into this box here. Um, again I just thought with the, with the battery that's going in and this things are just going to get a little bit too tight so I'm quite happy and, and more than comfortable to, to keep that as a separate project but I do want to have some form of ATU in here so it'll be a manual one and it'll be a, a, a mixture between between these two where um, it's just going to be a simple probably more discussing this one here just a simple uh, capacitor and inductance 
uh, maybe an L, I might make it a Pi, we'll see what happens. Um, and then utilize the Arduino, which will be driving the radio anyway, to measure, like it's doing over here from the bridge, both the forward and the reflected voltages, and then have that displayed on, on the display. So it'll be something along, along that in the radio. So definitely some kind of antenna tuner, uh, albeit manual. In terms of actually running the radio itself, uh, it'll be either a, an Arduino uh, Mini or a Micro. Uh, they're both pretty similar in size. Um, yeah, so we'll use that. Uh, in terms of changing the frequency, in the past I've used the uh, road, this type of style of rotary encoder with the with the detents. Um, yeah, it works fine. Um, it's got the advantage of the switch where you can push the switch in and, and how I do the software, once the button is pushed in and it's rotated, then the underscore changes uh, under the digits to then determine what number gets changed as a, um, as a rotary encoder gets turned. Uh, for this particular radio, I'm going to use uh, a rotary encoder that was given to me some time ago. Um, it's a really nice, and I've used this in one of my other radios, uh, it's an optical um, rotary encoder. So it's got a disc with a whole series of slots where light shines through to create the pulses. It's yeah, smooth as butter, very, very nice. So I'm going to build this into this particular radio. Uh, it will mean then I'll need to have some other separate little push button switch to give you the same functionality as the existing rotary encoders, i.e. some kind of push button switch. But yeah, we'll play around with that at some point in time. Uh, this is going to be a, a single conversion um, super hit, so not software defined. Uh, and I think in this particular case I will reuse uh, a commercial filter which I've had in the junk box for a long time. Um, 9 megs, that'll work well with the 40 meter band for the IF. So uh, I think, like I say, I'll um, utilize, utilize this. So find out the specs, find out what the IO uh, impedance is, then, and then match the, um, the, two trends, the two amplifiers on either side to that. So that's the plan there. Um, in terms of the display, um, I've had problems before with some of the, the LCD displays I've got are really unreadable in bright sunlight. So I think I'll, well, I do want to have a, um, a sunlight readable display. Um, I don't know if I'll use this one here. This is a, an e-ink display. Um, I've bought this because I want to have a play around with one of these uh, at some point in time. Probably for a solar project, I suspect. But uh, I don't think it'll be that one, but it, it could be either the uh, 16 by 2 which I expect it probably will be, just because it's, it's quick and simple and easy and, and for what I want to do just fine, versus, say, um, the old Nokia display, which um, I've used before and they work just fine. But um, I think for simplicity, I'll probably just go back to a, um, a 16 by 2 um, LCD with the I2C back plan, which is nice and easy to run, uh, and that'll be on the radio. So that's the plan. Now, um, the amplifiers themselves, uh, again, I'm going to use a, a 3904 because it's it's easy to get hold of, um, inexpensive, and for what I do in the frequency band that I'm playing with, they work just fine. But rather than running the the um, the 3904 amplifier flat out, in other words, with no feedback, max gain, um, I do want to play around with um, some negative feedback to give the uh, the amplifier some some good stability. Not that I've had problems with in the past, but I do want to play around with some negative feedback. So in that particular case, I'm still going to present the collector with 200 ohms um, through some uh, transformer, transforming about 50 ohms on the output. Uh, in terms of the quiescent or the, uh, the the biasing point, that will be voltage divider biasing again uh, because it's what I was taught and it's what I like uh, to set the quiescent point. However, we will have uh, coming off the collector a feedback uh, resistor RF and also some form of um, feedback also on the emitter um, to basically set the overall gain. The radio, in terms of the IF, um, having a radio or say again, having an amplifier with flat gain over frequency is not so important because it's a fixed frequency with the IF. Um, and because it's just going to be purely on the 40 meter band, uh, in terms of the antenna amplifier, which will be switched in and out, uh, it's not so important either. 
either way, I still want to play around with the the um, a feedback amplifier to to just basically get more understanding of it and how it works and more so the maths. So that's the plan there. In terms of the power amplifier, um, again, I like QRP. I have no problems with QRP. So that's sort of five watts or so. It can be a little bit over. I don't care. A little bit under. Mm, same. Uh, how I'm going to generate that is still a little bit up in the air. Uh, I wasn't necessarily going to go with an IRF 510. I was probably quite keen to revisit uh, a CB style or a UHS again a VHF um, power amplifier transistor, which I have used, oh gosh, quite some time ago, um, which worked particularly well in that particular case. So I'm pretty quite keen to to revisit that. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be single ended or push pull. Um, that's still a little bit up in the air. So let's we'll see how things sort of play out. But um, I do want to have another sort of look at how that's going to work. Um, in terms of mounting it, in the past I've had the circuit board mounted this way with the copper board providing the ground plane at the bottom, the various modules mounted on top and everything facing up. Um, I like that style because I get to see everything and as I'm using it I can sort of think oh, yes, that's what that's doing, this is what's being generated here and, and you know, I like that when I um, use the equipment. In this particular case, I'm probably going to be a little bit different and have that uh, earth plane at the top and everything underneath facing up, uh, which will then allow me to use that, that plane there. I can have mount on there, the panel mount for the um, for the Anderson pole. I can have the the um, screen coming through it. I can have mount, mounted on there the rotary encoder and the like. So that's probably the way I'm going to go. Uh, I was toying with the idea, so if I now was to flip that board back around and facing us, not the strip board here, but copper board, uh, do I want to drag out of the garage a, uh, a CNC 3018? I've, I've had one of those for a long, long time. Um, at the time when I was using it, and this, gosh, this goes back five years or so, uh, yes, it was okay, but frustrating because at the time, I hadn't enabled the height referencing so in the um, z-axis. I hadn't set up um, electronically to tell it where the um, cutting head actually reached the material. Um, and the other frustrating thing with that particular uh, CNC machine was that there was uh, no way of leveling the bed. Um, I've been doing a little bit of reading since then and yeah, the, the, there'd be a better idea if this was my material here, or more the point, let's just choose this one here, is to then actually sense the height across a series of points, and then that would electronically tell it if it was here to bring the x or the z axis down to a certain point, and that's where it would actually touch the material. Um, probably not explain that very well, but I'm, at some point in time, I want to drag that particular CNC machine back out and have a play with it. Not to necessarily design and to engrave um, a traditional PCB with, uh, with 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 traces going out to to pads and the like. Uh, I'm not looking at doing that. It's more to do uh, of something similar to this, where I have a a series of lines potentially divided into uh, individual uh, pads, and then to to build the the, the, the amplifiers and the like onto these um, and then I could have that if I was to go to the whole hog here the whole thing upside down and then have it laid out where the various um, stages would go that would be quite a deviation from how I've traditionally done things um, I find this method here works very well for the way I think and the, and the way I build where each of those modules is, is, is tacked down in the diagonal corners uh, by just a small a small amount of um, uh, desoldering braid it just creates the link between the, the ground plane and what in these particular cases are the negative rails uh, that works really well for me and I suspect um, I will do the same thing here but that aside that is still on my list of things to drag out and have a bit of a play with that um, and have a revisit anyway 
Oh, just notice over here the microphone. I'll probably use this microphone here. It's an old one I've had in the junk box for a long, long time. Off a of VHF radio. No reason why I can't use that again. That's nice and light and robust and works well. Um, and I've got one of those on the on the uh, the male side, so I probably just end up using that as well uh, on the uh, on the radio. Anyway, so that's enough for me rambling on about uh, what I'm about to embark on. So quite looking forward to it. Um, chance to drag out the spectrum analyzer and uh, have a bit of a, a closer look at um, the three OIM points on the amplifiers, uh, just for interest sake, and uh, and we'll go from there. So anyway, that's enough from me. Uh, 73 everyone and I will uh, do a little bit more thought of this and then start doing some design work. Um, in terms of the design work I don't know if I'll necessarily through the videos go through line by line all the maths. Um, that does make for quite long videos so I might get them a little bit shorter and I'll just put the uh, the maths themselves uh, up on the uh, up on the blog. Um, that sort of actually raises another point about circuits. Um, I have absolutely no problems leveraging and using circuits out of books and that, but for me I need to I need to understand the logic and the maths behind it, how it came up with it. I, I just I just have a, a problem with just lifting straight off out of a book a circuit and using it. Um, so if I can reverse engineer it and and come up with the logic then that's great. I'm into it. So, um, you know, something to think about. Okay, I've rambled on enough. 73, and uh, we'll talk to you shortly. Cheers all.